So, I am Abhishek, I work at Helpship. I do the DevOps here. Uh, I will be sharing uh, our learnings with MongoDB. Uh, we have been using it for last uh, three years and uh, currently we are uh, serving around 10,000 queries per second in our current Mongo infrastructure. So, so we started with uh, well, let's let's first Am I audible now? Yes. Enough? Okay. So, yeah. So, let's. Uh, how many of you are using Mongo in production? So, not uh, much people. Well, uh, let me introduce Mongo, a little introduction to Mongo. Uh, it's an open source document database that provides high performance, high availability, and automated scale. So this is basically a Mongo document structure. It looks like, and uh, it's, it looks like JSON. It's basically a JSON document. And uh, when we say it's schemaless, uh, it's it's called uh, called a schemaless. Uh, we say that Mongo uh, doesn't require you, uh, you to have particular schema, and uh, you can have any specific. Uh, uh, you can say. Format or data. Uh, so this is basically a simple Mongo document which has key value pairs, JSON-like format. Many of you must be familiar with JSON. So yes, uh, why we chose Mongo image? So basically, it's schemaless as I already told you, and then faster development in early stage. So Mongo is not complex like uh, other no scale. No SQL solutions, for example, example React. So it's very straightforward and simple. You can uh, just install a single a MongoDB instance on your so local system and get started with it within five ten minutes. Okay. So yeah, that's what the faster development in this case. So for a startup, it's uh, very much important to deliver the product faster and get it evolved or get it evaluated by the customers. And then, yeah. uh, so for we first started with master slave replication. Uh, back then, uh, replica sets are the current uh, important or hot feature of MongoDB was not available then. So we started with master slave uh, replication. Uh, so Advantage of master slave replication is it's easier to maintain, right? but the disadvantage is no automatic failure. So suppose uh, if your primary goes down, then there is no way uh, for Mongo to automatically uh, tell the secondary to get shifted to primary or get promoted as a primary. You will have to do it manually. So that's a problem. Then. Uh, some of these uh, adversity <coughs> operations, which are which which are very common actually, like converting master slave to replica slave, or promoting slave to be a master, or converting master to slave, those kind of operations uh, require uh, very. I, I want to say huge, but it requires a downtime basically. And again, there is no automatic uh, failure, failure, so you will have to do it manually. So that's that was the problems with master slave application. Uh, then we yeah, global locks. Uh, this is another uh, debatable topic of uh, Mongo. We will hear about it a lot. And back in 2.2 uh, version days, uh, Mongo used to take a global lock on entire database. So for every write application, there is a global lock on entire database, and uh, other operations are not possible. Suppose you have two databases, uh, uh, two databases stored in Mongo. And you are writing something to one database, then you won't be able to write to another database because there is a global lock. 
that was the problem with 2.2 version of Mongo. Uh, with 2.4, they have come up with uh, database level locking, so there are no global locks anymore. So, if you are writing to one database and there are other databases, other databases can access, uh, can accept reads and writes, while one is just ac accepting uh, writes because it's locked. So, they, uh, they solve this problem and they are coming up with uh, row level locking, so it's uh, even uh, better, but it's not uh, production ready as yet. Then, yeah, uh, 2.4 still has global locks on certain operations, but they are very limited, like uh, repairing a database or compacting database. So, uh, repairing and compacting are very critical operations. <coughs> That's why they have global locks for only those operations, but not the uh, right operation. So, row level lock means you have document, right? Everything yes. is in form of document, it's not the couple of the RDB. Yeah, but uh, you can you can treat a uh, document like a row. So you put a lock on your document. Yes. So no yes. Concurrent, uh, right. Right. No concurrent rights. So yeah, then we switched to replica sets for uh, because our tra traffic was increasing. Our uh, customers are increasing, and it's not uh, really uh, visible to have master server application in place. Uh, such a uh, high request uh, website. So, we switch to replica sets. Uh, replica sets uh, give automatic failover. So, basically, you have a primary and then you have you can have uh, around 6 secondaries. You, can, you cannot, cannot go beyond 6 because it is not recommended by MongoDB. But you can have around 6 secondaries and you can place them in different. Uh, we, we use AWS, so we place them in different region for, uh, regions for and different uh, availability zones for uh, uh, failure or uh, AWS failure purposes. So, you can have 6 secondary and 1 primary and it works like that. Uh, it uh, takes up elections and with elections it chooses primary uh, and secondary. So, if your primary goes down, then the secondary will step up as a primary. <coughs> Then you can, uh, uh, it's called uh, RS config, replica set configuration. In replica set configuration, you can define priorities. Uh, so something like this is a primary which priority 5, and then this is the secondary primary uh, priority 4, and then we have another secondary with priority 3. Suppose primary with priority 5 goes down, then uh, out of these two secondaries, the one which has more priority will become a primary. That kind of stuff. So, this happens automatically. Uh, you, you can set priorities yourself or uh, the priorities are assigned default by default. So, that's automatic failure and rights for loss without rights concern. So, uh, yeah. So, right concern is uh, basically uh, how many members of database you want to write, uh, you want your rights to go basically. So, suppose uh, in a 3 nodes uh, replica set cluster, 1 is primary and 2 are secondaries. So, first type of write concern is unacknowledged basically. So, uh, write comes from a client and your, your driver which is writing to the, to the primary will not acknowledge anything to the client. Okay, that's unacknowledged. Right? It's very fast. It's very fast but it, may be unreliable because there is no acknowledgement. If there is a network failure, your client won't be able to pay. If there is a data loss, your client won't be able to pay. That's unacknowledged. It's very fast. But it, this kind of uh, unacknowledged uh, write concern may serve purpose for particular type of application, but not in our case. And then second is, uh, I guess, uh, acknowledged. In that case, uh, if there is a network failure, then only your client gets Acknowledged. Otherwise, uh, third type is uh, uh, journal acknowledgement. And means uh, when a request comes, it gets uh, written to the journal, and then your client gets acknowledged. Basically, in that case, you are sure that your data is written to the journal or to the client. And then another type of uh, acknowledgement is there. It's called replica set or replica set acknowledgement. In that case, what happens is uh, your write comes, it uh, gets written to the journal primary 
until it propagates to secondary and gets written over there and then you get the acknowledgement. This is called uh, replica set acknowledgement. So, without right concern, we were uh, losing some uh, rights when there was, high, there was a high time. So, we encountered that problem and then we started using replica set so that uh, to make sure that our rights are going to the secondary level. Uh, so, priorities, I already talked about priorities, it is uh, used for election, election in purpose. So, if primary goes down, then secondary becomes a primary in that case. So, you might want to set a low priority to, the, uh, to one of the members, which is in another region, and your main infrastructure is in some different region. So, you can set a priority on that secondary service, so that it will become primary. Yeah, and then promotions and state downs. Uh, promotions and state downs, you can uh, Mongo provides their own shape where you can use RS config to promote and demote uh, primaries and secondaries on the flag. So you can just uh, write a single command or uh, write a single <coughs> JSON-like document where you set the the priorities. For example. <coughs> Let's say post time is like this. And code. And then we have private memory. So this is uh, configuration. So for suppose uh, for the secondary, we have one of the secondary members, we have written this configuration. And then we just do like rs dot reconfig. So what will happen is uh, this way you will be able to change the priority of earlier uh, Mongo instance to something two or you can set it to 3 or whatever. That is how you can uh, change parity on the flag. It has uh, uh, little, dis little disadvantages like if you are using this RS config to promote uh, any primary member or demote any primary member to secondary or promote any secondary to primary then in that case what happens for a fraction of uh, seconds all your members are secondary. So no rights are uh, going to the to the IP asset. In that case you can use some rights. But again you can uh, address that problem through your application or queuing system or uh, it depends uh, upon what your application needs are. So that problem can be solved. Right? Then Uh, no, it will be just fraction of second, like one two seconds. Yeah. But then, if you have a high traffic, then you will lose the uh, rights. So, yeah, sharding. We tried sharding actually. We are not using sharding in production, but we tried for the uh, analytics uh, purpose. And we uh, we faced this outrageous problem actually. Because if your shard key is not uh, chosen properly, then it happens that uh, if you are running, let's say, four instances and your one collection or in our system, one table is distributed across uh, four instances, okay, and you are writing data to that table based on your shard key. And if your shard key is not right, then it might happen that your data is getting written to single server only out of those four. Your table is distributed across four uh, uh, instances, but your data is continuously getting written to only one uh, server. It makes it a hard region and it might go down. So, so choosing the right shard key is very important. They have extensive documentation about uh, choosing shard key. Uh, one of the early uh, developers of company, we have written a book about it. It's a good, good read, I think. Uh, 
then yeah, the shattered taking backups in shattered environments are also uh, <coughs> I can say tricky because uh, sim uh, simple Mongo dump they, they have this command called Mongo dump. Mm -hmm. You just you can just dump all the all the data in single file, but it's not possible with shattered environment because your tables are distributed across uh, different instances. So. So basically, when you take a backup, then you should be able to restore it and use as if uh, it's a new database. Right. So that is that part is actually tricky with uh, sharding. But you can take uh, use file file uh, system snapshots and MongoDB as well in case of taking backups. But it's tricky. Uh, then yeah, this is a very uh, interesting feature of read preferences of MongoDB preferences. So by default, uh, all your read operations are written from from the primary. So even if you have secondary, secondary is just uh, secondary are just to uh, uh, replicate the data to make the data available and in case of fail, fail, uh, failovers. Uh, but if you are, you have a default uh, Mongo installation, Mongo application installation, then all the reads and writes are going and coming from primary. So, so we face this problem that uh, our application actually uh, actually there was a uh, read queue, uh, right? A read queue. Was found and one of the one of our primary. And what, what happened is, it, there was a, a lock on the database level. And basically, since there was a lock because the write uh, write was going on, the read queue found and some of our reads started to fail. Started to fail. <coughs> so that's uh, that's where we discovered that all our reads are being served from primary and second reads are lying there just like that. So in that case, what we so in that case, what we did is uh, use secondary preferred read preference. So what secondary preferred does it? It uh, it, it uh, allows your application to read from secondary. So in that in that uh, that way, we uh, reduced the read queue found on primary, and we were able to serve writes through secondary. So basically, read preferences are used to scale your uh, read operations, and our, uh, our infrastructure, our application is a very uh, uh, read heavy application. So we had to uh, use this feature to better the problems we are facing. Uh, then it's uh, it's very much possible that there are propagation delays in this scenario. Uh, where your application is writing to primary, and and your application is immediately trying to read the same, the same data which is written to primary from one of the secondaries because you have uh, enabled the secondary paper. So your application is writing to primary and trying to read the same data from one of the secondaries. But what happens? Is there are lot of requests. It, it might happen that your data is not propagated to secondary. So in that case, it will fail. So that is very much possible. Or uh, secondary might have a stale data. So what is the propagation time between primary and secondary? Uh, propagation time is uh, uh, we have observed it's not that much as long as you have uh, all the secondary and primary in the same region. But if region changes, then there is I don't have people in number right now, but there is an issue. Uh, then yeah, uh, MongoDB is uh, an eventually consistent system. So it might happen that there are rotation periods. I have already told you about the right concern, right? Uh, the and the So yeah, so uh, one thing you can do, uh, you can combine this read reference uh, a feature and write concern to make sure that writes are provided to secondaries. So if you do that, uh, your application might slow down a bit, 
but you your data will be consistent so that uh, the problem won't happen like uh, your application client is trying to read the data from secondary and it doesn't have the data it can be uh, limited using write concept so that you can tell your application to uh, wait till the write goes to every secondary as well as primary yeah so read preferences uh, preference actually uh, helped us uh, in one more way that uh, uh, there was a failure uh, of one of our mongo uh, servers uh, primary servers because of uh, some aws uh, reasons and then we had to promote uh, secondary to primary and as a, i already told you that uh, there is uh, there is some uh, little uh, time uh, fraction of time where you are all uh, uh, mongodb instances are secondary in that case uh, all your writes are failed reads are happening with writes are failed so having read preferences set Uh, we could uh, we could uh, make sure that uh, primary is not getting all the writes, and we could save some data loss because writes are uh, reads are being distributed across all the secondary. So we could uh, stop, we could avoid some data loss where in first case all the writes and reads are coming from primary. So all the write, reads which went to secondary was not data loss. Uh, then yes, there is another feature called tags. Uh, tags can be added to secondaries, and using tags, uh, you can tell your application to read particular data from particular instance, particular secondary. Say, uh, for example, <coughs> somehow you, uh, you manage to figure out particular request is coming from. Uh, Uh, US and particular request is coming from India, and you have uh, <coughs> one secondary in India and one secondary. I'm just uh, taking some hypothetical situation. So one secondary is in India and one secondary is in US. Then you can tell your application based on these tags to fetch data from the nearest uh, instance. So US uh, traffic coming from US will fetch data from US uh, instance. And traffic coming from India will be data from Indian instance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the instance provision is Indian one. Okay, so for that tags can be used, and tags can be used with write concern as well. So you can tell your application that uh, this write should go to this instance first, and then other instances. That way you can uh, use write concerns and tags. so let's come to monitors so mms is called uh, mongo monitoring service yeah, it is provided by mongodb.org and it's basically a single uh, simple command called db server status which gives a huge output and lots of uh, insights about how mongo is performing and all it's basically mms is basically the same information Presented in the form of graphs like this. So you have all this information: log percentage, queues, cursors, network connections, background percentage. <laughs> everything uh, you get in a JSON document format in Mongo shell itself using DB dot server status call. But this is presented here. This is a free service, by the way, and I would recommend to use. Every mode is used. Then backups. Uh, <coughs> we are still currently using Mongo dump to take backups. Uh, we use generally secondary instances to take backups from. Uh, it might not be a point in time backup, but it has served our uh, purpose so far. Uh, but it has its own problem, right? Uh, like. Uh, When you are doing Mongo dump, the system usage on secondary goes very high, or uh, it takes up uh, RAM and CPU as well. So, 
there is this concept called working set in uh, Mongo, where you are frequently access data has to fit in the memory. If you are, don't have enough memory, then Mongo will start stop, swapping, and swapping will uh, definitely degrade your performance. So, in case of Mongo dump also, you need a uh, lot of memory basically to to take the database dumps. So, it might affect uh, the performance of your Mongo cluster uh, if you are using Mongo dump. Uh, we have never used. Uh, Backup service by MongoDB.org, but what I read about it, it's a good solution to have backups uh, without uh, affecting much your cluster performance. Ah, so I was as I was telling you, working set needs to fit in memory. So yeah, the frequently accessed uh, data needs to fit in the memory. Otherwise, Mongo starts. Uh, swapping and it degrades the performance and uh, it increases page faults because Mongo is trying to access some data from memory and it's not there. Then it goes to disk and checks for that, checks for the data, and then there you start having performance problems. Uh, the second thing is recur database. So what happened is we. Uh, earlier we used to uh, store uh, our analytics data in Mongo only and that was huge data, every request, uh, everything we were uh, just uh, putting into Mongo and it so happened that uh, uh, our collection size grew very fast. Uh, later we uh, thought that we should use some other uh, technology to, uh, to address the analytics problem and we stopped writing to Mongo. But we have this use collections, uh, useless collections in Mongo. So we decided one day that we remove all those collections, and that was around 70% of total uh, our total data. So we removed all those collections. But interestingly, we uh, we found out that uh, the database size is same. It has not changed. If you take Mongo dump, then you will get uh, around 5 MB or 6 MB data maybe. But the database size never changed, even if we deleted around 70 percent of our data. So, so when I looked up in Mongo Docs, I came to know about the compaction and repair database thing. So, repair database, what it does is basically uh, the defragmentation. So, it uh, it checks on the collections and it removes unwanted data and defragments this and thus reduces the overall size of database. But this recurrent database op operation is very expensive because it takes a global lock on entire database. And you, you really don't want your database to be locked when you are still serving the requests. And then again it needs uh, twice the yeah, twice the uh, disk space plus two weeks to complete the operation. So that was the problem with the database. So we never used it. We still have the huge database actually, and with not much significant data. Uh, then XFS, yes. So all our Mongo servers uh, use XFS. Uh, it's recommended uh, on Mongo docs basically, and. Uh, XFS provides journaling and it's, uh, it's very well suited for uh, databases like Mongo. So we use XFS and XFS uh, uses this nice feature called XFS free where you can use that feature to basically take file system level snapshots of Mongo. And then it also provides XFS GoFS uh, which you can use in case you need to expand your disk. So just attach one more disk, configure your RAID LVM partition and you can just say XFS GrowFS on that partition and it will just expand the disk and live expansion basically. You don't have to uh, take anything down the lock. Then yes, uh, since we are hosted on AWS, we, uh, we try to figure out what is the best solution for 
storing a database on AWS, especially Mongo. <laughs> then LVM and Red 10 is what we use. LVM we use to use for uh, extending the file system. So you can attack more disk and extend. And uh, Red 10 is basically for redundancy purposes. One plus one plus zero. Uh, then yeah, there is one uh, kernel level, uh, system level uh, tweak that we use is keep a lifetime, which is default by default it's two hours, seven two zero zero in Linux kernel. Uh, we set it to three hundred. Again, it's uh, recommended for uh, uh, sharding and uh, recognition purposes. That particular keep a lifetime. So these are some tweaks. Yeah. So uh, we are we are planning to use uh, or we are rather evaluating right now uh, this another solution called TokyoMX. Uh, TokyoMX is nothing but another MongoDB. But they have come up with uh, different techniques of storing the data called fractal trees. So using fractal trees, they managed to reduce 90% of space. Then they also provide transactions, the acid transactions, the, the RDBMS databases which are acid compliant. Those transactions they are providing. Which are currently absent in Mongolia. Then, yeah, and they also claim that the they provide tens faster indexing. So we are trying it out right now. Uh, they don't provide these two features which Mongo currently provide: text search, full text search, and your special indexes. indexes. Yeah, so. So how many people? How many people are involved into maintaining this setup? Uh, currently, I am the only one. Okay.